Good day, Chattanooga. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to my vlog. James T. here. We're going to be talking to uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he's not actually from Chattanooga, but uh, he does come here quite a bit. He's uh, he's pretty much a regular in the, the con circuit. He comes up and stays with us, and, and uh, he helps us with our Christmas uh, displays every year. His name's Rick Jackson, uh, and uh, he's carried the title of the angriest black man in America among some of us uh, he gets riled up uh, he's a good guy he's educated uh, he knows what he's talking about and we're gonna have a, a little discussion on uh, TV movies we're gonna talk a little bit about the the last Jedi that kind of thing and then we're gonna compare some uh, uh, modern uh, TV shows and writing and stuff like that and we'll talk about lazy writing that kind of thing and uh, I think you'll enjoy it so let's go talk to Rick this way maybe this way no I had mine already so you, you said you were going to start off on the kids kids what's wrong with kids I hate kids and here's the deal I don't actually hate kids Okay. I hate parents. Parents are the scourge of the planet. Because the kids are only doing what the parents tell them to do. Well, that's now, true. That's true. That's true. Of course, everybody's going to say, well, the kid has their, a mind of their own. Yeah. Really? Honestly? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> so, when you're dealing with a kid, you're not dealing with that kid. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with all the crap that parent has shoved into that kid's brain. Yeah. That kid is now processing and now trying to spout back into what it understands as a reality. Okay. So okay. at no point in time are you actually dealing with a person who has a formulated mind and opinion. They're still piecing their stuff together. So right. I can't, so even though I hate them for who and what they are, I don't entirely hate them because they're ignorant. At the end of the day, they're ignorant. What's That's really... That's your kid. We'll get to your kid. But what you're really dealing with is all the... So when teachers are dealing with a bad kid mm -hmm. in their classroom... Or here, actually, let me back up and say, here's something else. How many times have you ever heard a parent say, um, I like my kid, I don't like other people's kids? Oh, I've heard that a lot. All yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of position have you put a teacher in? They're not dealing with anybody except everyone else's kid. Yeah. Now, you only like your kid. And he or she only likes their kid, but now they have all these kids that they don't like. Right. Now, I'm not saying teachers don't like kids, because obviously they're there to teach. They're there to teach. Not put up with your bad kid who you don't want to home train and then uh, send to the, to the school system. Right. You're supposed to home train that child, give them at least some assemblance of how of what's expected of them in a social situation right. and how they're supposed to behave and then thusly when they're in this situation hopefully they'll remember some of those teachings right. exercise some of those skills and thusly put the teacher in the position to do what he or she does best teach them so that yeah. they can then add new lessons to what the kid already knows and the kid can go home and say hey mommy daddy guess what I learned well tell us and then that's amazing and awesome mm -hmm. And so now the parents are interacting with their child yeah. and they're understanding what the child has learned and then now integrating those lessons into what they believe their belief system is okay. and how they want to run their house. Right, right. Parents okay. don't want to do that. Okay. They just want to, they just want quiet. They want to be left alone because they've been working all day. They're tired and here comes yeah. a kid. Mommy, look at this. Mommy, look at that. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, they don't be bothered. But guess what? <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> For whatever reason, either an accident, a lack of a condom, or you intended this. <laughs> this child is now your responsibility. Yeah. Now, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Parent, you are part of that community. Yeah. It's not everyone else who has to raise your child. Well, I brought it yeah. in, y'all can raise it. And a lot of times, there's like, well, they just toss it out there. Yeah. And hopefully, they'll learn. Yeah. Sink or swim? Sink or swim. Okay, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. When it starts sinking, then you want to blame the community for it sinking. Why is everyone catering to my child? Why is anyone protecting my child? Yeah. 
Not my child. <laughs> I'm busy protecting. I'm busy protecting my crap from your uh, criminal child who has no home <laughs> training, and all it wants to do is destroy stuff so that you'll pay attention to it. Yeah. And yeah. that's where we're at. So parents are the scourge of the planet. Everybody talks about, well, hey, you know, these millennials are this, and these millennials are that, and blah 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 blah. Who taught the millennials? Who taught them that? That was the baby boomers. That was a baby boomer. Or Generation X, or whichever yeah. generation you yeah. want to leave. Yeah. The point is, everything you're complaining about what, you, what the kids nowadays do came from the parents who taught them. Right. People say, well, you know, millennials <laughs> nowadays believe, you know, they believe they should get a, a, an appreciation trophy or a participation trophy. That's the dumbest thing I've ever It is the life. dumbest thing. Who gave them the participation trophy? Usually a parent or their or, parent or whatever because the child was engaged in a competition and lost and was crying they didn't want their child to cry so they said well here this will make it better yeah. no you teach your child how to be better yeah if they're uh, which includes sport, learning how to lose which includes learning how to lose because there's lessons in that there is a lot of lessons in that and yeah. In the grand scheme of things, you're going to lose way more than you win. The, Without a doubt. The best baseball players who are batting, what, around 300? Mm -hmm. You know what that honestly means? That means out of the thousand times they go to bat, they will only hit 300. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. So, And those are the best ones, meaning around 30% of the time. Yeah. And that's the best. And, those, and that's the be best of the best. Most cases... They're around 10%. Yeah. Your average predators that are out hunting, your average mm -hmm. wild predators mm -hmm. like lions and tigers, mm -hmm. their kill rate, 10%. Yeah. Which means they are losing way more times than they're winning. Yeah. They're successful way less. And you have to learn to deal with that. The parent is supposed to help the child understand. That happens. Mm -hmm. Here's how you deal with it. Here's how you work forward, move forward, and then move on. Okay. And yes, I'm here to help you. I can't fight all your battles for you. At some point in time, you have to you have to get out there and win, right. or you have to lose right. and suck it up. Go, okay, well, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. How can I do it better next time? And then, if it's you know whatever the sport is, mom, dad, get out there practice with them. You know basketball. Okay, you know, hey, let's practice some shots, mm -hmm. or give them an opportunity to do it themselves. Whichever it is. Right. But the point is, you can't just stick them in front of a TV. You can't just stick a, a, a shove a video game in their face. Mm -hmm. And then expect them to win. Right. right. Okay. And parents who say, oh, my child is ADD, bullshit. If your <laughs> child can spend four fucking hours playing the video game intently, they yeah. don't suffer from ADD. Yeah. ADD means attention, as some, attention, attention deficit disorder. disorder. So even after about 15 to 20 minutes, they will get tired to put down the game and go do something else. Yeah. After about 15 or 20 minutes, they'll get tired of the book and put down and do something else. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is they're doing, after about half an hour, they're going to get tired and go do something else. Mm -hmm. Or they'll be overwhelmed with all the choices and not do anything. That's ADD. Right, right. Then there's the, I don't want us. No, I don't want to do my homework. Yeah. No, I don't want to do chores. Yeah. I would much rather play these video games. So I suffer from ADD, so I can't do my homework. You played that fucking video game for eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't move. <laughs> Replayed that level 16 times until you got through it. <laughs> That's yeah. not ADD. Yeah. That's, I'm having way more fun playing this video game. Than doing my algebra homework. Than doing my algebra. And I get it. <laughs> I love video games. Yeah. I'm an addict. I can't play video games. Because you know why? You I wouldn't put the shit down. Yeah. I, I would that. not put it down. I get that. I do. So I, I said, hey, you know what? Let me at least make another choice. Yeah. So even if I'm just watching TV, I'll get bored and go do something else. Yeah, video game, yeah. yeah. I'll be there all freaking day. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. But parents, parents, teach your kids. Not my fucking job. Or guess what? If it is my fucking job, I don't want to hear your mouth about it. You can't do that to my child, then you do it. Or put on a condom. <laughs> Birth control. <laughs> it can help you. I didn't have kids. You know why? Didn't want them. <laughs> I know their responsibility. I know they're a lot of work. I can read a book <laughs> and understand what happens. Oh no, it'll be different for me. My family be perfect. Yeah. Is it? 
Is it really? No, it's not. Shut the fuck up. And don't take your child to the movie theater if they're going to run their mouth. Yeah, that would piss me off, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm not going to ask you any questions about kids or parents. Uh, you know, we're not going to go into dogs because dogs are kind of the same thing as kids. You know, when you... It's a responsibility you have to take care of, and, you know, you can't just put it down and let somebody else do it. Now, um, we just watched the TV series. Yeah. In the last couple of days. Okay. Um, uh, Hap and Leonard. Hap and Leonard. I, I was so pleasantly surprised at how good that was. That yeah. was, I never heard of it. Yeah. Or if I did, I didn't remember it. Yeah. But it was really awesome. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. Tell me what you think of the two two main characters. What, what, what's your your impression of the that writing and the acting of, the, of those two? The writing was <laughs> awesome. What they did for me, what I got out of it was a lot of character development, um, a lot of interplay between the two characters. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't just you know from the writing that says okay they know each other. Mm -hmm. And they love each other, and they protect each other like brothers. Mm -hmm. But they built the history mm -hmm. of why they're this way. You know, had the the common trauma of them losing their dad in the same. Each yeah, one of them the lost their dad at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and then not only did they lose their dad, but then that tragedy was in swept under the rug because yeah. a certain person with enough power and responsibility could make it disappear. Right. So the, the person, the guy's dad, the guy's dad, who was so the guy was driving drunk, yeah. And while uh, Hap's dad, who's white, so what happened? Happens dad are white, Leonard, his dad are black, and it's taking place in the sixties. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of racial tension, uh, and I appreciate it that they didn't glaze over that. Right. They right. said this is accurate yeah. to the situation and how people react. Yeah, it can build some tension. That whole that whole series, especially that first and second season. Yeah. You know, we haven't watched the third season. Yet, yeah. But that first season, it really dug into the history of that racial tension and the history of both of these guys. One guy white, one guy black. Yeah. And why they're so close, and why there's so much tension in there around them. Yeah. And then that second te uh, season went straight into the racial, and it, it's the the time that it takes place is is eighty eight. Yeah. You know, the actual series takes place in '88. And they have flashbacks uh, to the '60s, right? And even in, and even in uh, Florida, earlier, and even earlier, but yeah. uh, but they're all flashbacks. But the, the series is taking place in basically 1988, um, and all of that racial all that racial tension has been in America the entire time. Yeah, it's and never gone away. It's never gone away. It's, it's still a day. It, it ebbs and flows. It's a lot better now than it was, mm -hmm. but you know, it's it still sucks. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's, we hear a lot more about it now. We hear a lot more about it because I think we hear a lot more about a lot of problems because of social media, media. Social media information is super highway. Uh, because of the gadgets and the way information flows, we have more access to information. 24-hour news. 24-hour news. So yeah. as opposed to things happening in a town and it only staying in that town, Yeah. Uh, someone broadcasts it. Right. Uh, so... In the second season, you know, we clearly see that there's a church that is blatantly attacked by the Klansmen. Klansmen. They blatantly show up, uh, drive everybody inside, and then burn the church down with everyone in it. Killing a couple of parents. They, they hung yeah. a guy. They, and they, then... they hung one guy, but everyone else got burned. Yeah. And children they, and all. Children and all. It was, it was easy. About 20 people yeah. uh, who were just straight up murdered right. by the Klan. And, of course, they're... There was no justice or satisfaction because you got to see the the newspaper print mm -hmm. about that, and they said it was hope burns and and that kind of stuff, and didn't say anything about any prosecutions or anything. It was just this happened, which was very common. Yes, which was very yes. common, and because the Klan could run them up like that, and they knew it. And a lot of them were actually uh, officials or even yeah. police officers, sheriffs, officers, sheriffs, uh, judges, political people. Political yeah. people yeah. They were Business in the Klan. Leaders. Yeah. And so they knew, since they were the system, at no point in time was the system going to prosecute them for what was blatantly murder. Because that's... Premeditated. Who, that's, they would have to prosecute themselves. Yeah, prosecute themselves. And we know they're yeah, not going to do that. Right. So, but they took that and they put that into the series. They owned it. They, they owned it. it. They said, this they is did. there and, and it was blatantly... And even a lot of the disenfranchised black people, you mm -hmm. know, who can't, you know, there's no opportunity. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Leonard is stuck with a, a drug dealer living next door to him. His uncle place when his yeah. uncle died. Yeah, his, his, yeah. His, or his, initially it's his uncle who's right. living there 
who's stuck with his drug dealer. Mm -hmm. Can't get rid of him. Yeah. And then his uncle dies, and now Leonard, the inheritance of Blaze, now he's stuck with a drug dealer. Yeah. So. And he has some very creative ways of dealing with this. Well, you know, he, you know, <laughs> so, he, he, he can't call the cops on him because, one, well, the cops aren't going to go and do anything. No. And as a matter of fact, as it turns out, the cops, or he teams up, the drug dealer teams up with the cops to, to prosecute. To frame. To frame yeah. Leonard. When he called the cops about finding a body in the in, in, in his basement. Under, underneath the, the floorboard. Underneath the floorboard. He's like, oh my gosh, this happened. Calls the cop. Now, of course, he didn't want to because Leonard's he black. Knew. And he knows how this is going to go. Yeah. And but of course, Pat, it went just like he Pat being white saying, hey, the right thing to do is to call the cops. Right. Leonard's like, I don't want to do that. No, really, you got to do that. So he calls the cops. And typical of what happens, a black person calling the cops, all of a sudden... He's now in the crosshairs of the cops. Yeah. And basically, all they want to do is pin this on him and call it done. Yeah. We get to say, it's a dead body. We get rid of another nigger, which is all that matters. And they use that term a number of times uh, Yeah, in the show. And it was culturally appropriate how they used it, it, it to it was, the time. It, As exactly, they didn't embellish. They didn't limit it. It was like growing up my growing up in the 80s in in a rural area yeah. um it sounded about like what i used to hear yeah so they were was, really accurate yeah in, in, in was, that that environment it was we're talking like banana <laughs> really yeah. like, yeah. like oh there's a banana there's a brown bag and there's a nigger that's it yeah so and there the cops were were focused on getting rid of uh a leonard mm -hmm. so luckily he had a lawyer Mm -hmm. uh, who was willing to help him out? And it was smoking hot. She was hot. She was she was a little scrawny for me, but yeah, she was a little skinny. She was a little skinny, but she was, she was you know beautiful what? Actress. She, she was, was she, she was, got she was, she was just nice long legs. I'm like, you know what? I take those legs. <laughs> yeah. She was very attractive, very intelligent. Too. Very intelligent, very attractive. Yes, deep down, I am a pervert. Let's, <laughs> let's just be clear about that. You're hot. Yeah. Hey baby. Hell yeah. Uh, so, but it was it was a really great show. Both seasons I thought were awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that was just a TV show uh, put on by like it wasn't the CW. I forget what. Actually, it's AMC. Is AMC did a that? A okay. A a Apparently, well, it, 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 they ran it on AMC according to the. Credits. I think it. I think it started on like Sundance TV or something like that. It was okay. Like that, where it originated from, but then it transferred to. Um, but now compare that to. Uh, let's say something we've been discussing that you haven't actually seen yet, but we know a lot about. Mm -hmm. Compare that to the big budget of The Last Jedi. Oh, wow. Uh, and this is why I get so mad at Disney and The Last Jedi, or, or big budget movies. Um, because there is good writing out there mm -hmm. uh, that can be done. There is uh, stories that can be told. Uh, there are characters that can be developed that can be very complex and that can be very three dimensional. Um, but to be honest, Disney would never tell that story because that would make too many people uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. All of the racial tension, mm -hmm. um, the bias, the blatant bias, the, the accurate portrayal of history mm -hmm. and how people treated each other mm -hmm. uh, would make the general public, white people, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They would not want to watch that. And so they would lose money. And at the end of the day, all Disney wants to do is make money. Yeah, I mean, they're in, what they do. They're, yeah. in, they're in business to turn a profit. Mm -hmm. And they've discovered, you know, I can tell a story that's a hard story that's accurate uh, and, and delve into who and what we are as a country and where we've come mm -hmm. and hopefully where we've come from and hopefully where we're going. Mm -hmm. Or I can just toss out some bullshit and <laughs> throw some glitter on it yeah. and sprinkle it, take, take this shit, Put some sprinkles on it, put some glitter on it, and watch the masses eat it up. Mm. And they discovered, well, this is a hard story. This mm. is a lot of work. And not a lot of people will want to eat that, even though it's a scrumptious meatloaf. You, right, right. That's full of flavor and spice. And it's real. And it's real. Yeah, you can, you can associate real yeah. life with whatever it is that you're producing, because there is a story there. Yes. And we all have a story to tell. Yes. It's all part of our lives. And telling that story often reflects on your personal experiences and it makes your life richer just knowing that someone else has 
experience that. Either has experienced or it, that or, or something you haven't understood, you know, a, a, a perspective you haven't seen. It can right. give you that. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I didn't understand that maybe um, that's the way it was in these times, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow, I understand now why Colin Kaepernick is taking that knee. Mm -hmm. Because this yeah. isn't just about five or six years yeah. ago. This is about hundreds of years. Right. Wow, you can see that and understand, okay, that's where that anger comes from. That's mm -hmm. where that ire comes from. And that's what a little bit of happened Leonard. Yeah. Touches on that. It's like, yeah. okay, this is your everyday experience. Every day. You every know? day. And if you experience that every day, as a white person, you have no concept of how that lays out. No. Right? Now, back to The Last Jedi. The storytelling. The storytelling. So, but then we have The Last Jedi, which I think could have been a much richer story. Now, I understand the, the complication there because there is a, a world there. There's a universe there. There's a history there. Uh, so there's a lot of history that's already been built. And now, um, The Last Jedi is a mythos, you know, right. it's, it's mythical, you know, it's all science fiction. Nothing is based in a reality per se. Right. Um, so they can do whatever they want with this universe. And so there's a lot of history that's already been built around this universe from a lot of years. And they decided, uh, to throw all that away. Mm -hmm. And despite the history that was there and the world building that they could have added to it, mm -hmm. uh, and I find this with a lot of the Hollywood stories in general, especially when they're rebooting. Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of yeah. look at the Star Wars as a yeah. reboot because they're going, yeah. oh, hey, this was really popular. Let me bring it back. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, all they're really doing is just trying to pay. They're not even really trying to pay homage because that's not the word I'm looking for. But it's, it's oh, hey, <laughs> actually... Uh, I love the way South Park uh, depicted it the, with the member berries. I don't know if you ever saw oh, that episode of okay. South Park, but yeah, it was I the think I did. member berries. Yeah. I was like, oh, don't you remember this? Don't you remember that? Like, don't you, do you remember Chewbacca? Remember Star Wars? Remember the cantina scene? Remember Han Solo? Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, oh, remember Luke Skywalker? Remember mm -hmm. lightsabers? Remember X Wing Fighters? Mm -hmm. And so, as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, you, we, you know, this is our first. You know, items and stories we're attaching ourselves to. Mm -hmm. So as we're building our identity as a child and as a human, we're, we have this now attachment to the story that we relate to mm -hmm. because of these visuals. Right. And right. there's a story there. You know, you may not fully understand the story itself until you're older and then you can connect pieces better. Yeah, you can fill in the blanks with knowledge that you already have. Mm -hmm. So the story doesn't have to tell it. If you're familiar with it, you fill in those blanks. Mm -hmm. So it's lazy writing. It is very it's, lazy it's, writing. And it's lazy production. It's lazy but Now, the visuals are, once again, they come back with these beautiful visuals. Uh, you know, they got the lightsaber. Uh, the color, you know, the, the art direction and the set design is amazing. Mm -hmm. But the story is lazy. Yeah. You know, they just go, oh, hey, you know, here's a character. And he carries a lightsaber. And it's red. Oh, remember Sith? Remember the bad guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, remember the force? And, oh my gosh, and, you know, you're living your childhood all over. You're, you're 11 years old all over again. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I am one of those people that want a story. I believe very much in the story, storytelling, characterization, uh, character development. And when it comes to the Star Wars saga... The episodes four, five, and six was a retelling of the hero's journey. Right. That was that's a two thousand year. It was a complete year, retelling yeah, of the hero's complete journey. Complete retelling, but in the science fiction situation, in the you know fantastic world of spaceships and lasers. And we're talking about Luke's story. We're talking about Luke. Right now, now, this part is, this is Luke's story. But then, what was even better about it was then. George Lucas, whether he meant to do it or not, and at first I thought he meant to do it because I was thinking, oh my God, this is a, a stroke of genius that he did this. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, seeing his work now, he didn't mean to do that. Someone else lucked into it. But then we had on top of that, we had the tragic story of the Greek hero layered on top of the hero yeah, story, yeah, yeah. which is Darth Vader. Right. So by the time we meet Darth Vader, Darth Vader is our tragic hero who has fallen from grace and is now, you know, is now going through hell. Yeah. While that's happening, Luke is going through his hero's journey, which is in direct conflict with the tragic hero's, right. Right. Uh, the end of the tragic hero's journey. Mm -hmm. So that when Darth Vader makes a sacrifice to save Luke and to go against the Empire, 
that is his moment of redemption. Right. And then thusly, he ascends. Right. That has happened to the tragic hero. That's okay. what's supposed to happen. And thusly, letting Luke finish his journey, his, his hero's, hero's journey. journey. And at the same time, that moment happened. I don't, you know, so, mm -hmm. as, so, of course, when I'm, you know, a kid, I don't understand any of that's happening. But as I've studied storytelling and, and research as an actor and understanding, you know, all right, here's how you need to tell a story. Here's how you want to invoke, you know, the emotion in the people. And here's what you want to, you know, what you want to convey to the people who are watching right, this right. so that we're all connected to this story. And this is a, a, a common ground we all come together as. Mm -hmm. I researched this and I was like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing moment. Mm. And then, you know, I thought in the prequels, we go back and in episodes one, two, and three, we get this wonderful, you know, telling of the hero's, of, of, the no, hero's journey. Of, no, of Anakin Skywalker's tragic fall. Oh, oh okay. So this, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is supposed yeah. to be Anakin Skywalker, you know, he, you know, he's an amazing individual. He has everything going for him, but he suffers from some fatal flaw, mm -hmm. which is typically hubris. Yeah. But they could have gone on many different ways, and I mm -hmm. want to see what they do with that. And then thusly, he fell. Right. And became Darth Vader. And became Darth Vader. Right. But that's what I thought they were going to do, and they threw that away. Mm -hmm. And then they came along with, you know, the episodes uh, uh, 7 and 8 now. Yeah. And, you know, The Force Awakens. Oh, no, I'm just going to retell... Uh, the previous story. You know, episode 4. I mean, oh, it, it but was with even, the girl. But I'm yeah. going to tell with the girl. And, and aren't we cool now? Yay. Like, but it was it was almost the same identical story. It was the same identical story. The same story. ship, the same yeah. character. Everything was the same. And then they said, okay, well, hey. And, well, and oh my gosh, you know, no spoilers, no spoilers. So we set off, or we thought, they set up some questions, you know, in The Force Awakens, that then... Uh, the Last Jedi would then address. Right. No. 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 Just, they're just threw it away. Well, in a recent uh, uh, discussion or something we were watching, I heard a, a very interesting analogy of of Ray mm -hmm. and how you have the hero's uh, journey, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we have Ray. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, she's that hero. Yeah. She's the only the thing is. We've skipped all the crap in the middle yeah. and just didn't tell it. No. So now we got the start, just like Lou did, and now she's a hero. Yeah. She's all the way through her story and skipped the entire middle development part. But all that development is what we need as viewers to connect with her struggle. Because right. the thing, the human condition that we all suffer from is we struggle against something. Well, and so, yeah. so by seeing the hero struggle, we can relate to that struggle, and somehow they get on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can do that ourselves. So that's why they inspire us. Right. Let me tell you something. Okay. I've appreciated you being here this weekend. Well, I would or, or this week. It was, it's not the weekend. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. Fourth um, of July weekend. Fourth, 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 actually, Fourth of July. Yeah. But, yeah. We got to shoot off some bottle rockets. Heck yeah. We got to watch some TV. Heck yeah. We hung out, had a few drinks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, and I've just enjoyed you being here, and uh, I appreciate you coming out. Always glad to see you. All right, man. All right. You guys, have a good one. We'll see you soon.